Shame. Hey, Aim. <laughs> Welcome to Deliberate Practice with Amy and Jamie. <laughs> um, I'm Amy. I am going to be your co host for today, um, modeling some practice. Um, I'm part of the Sendio team. I'm a therapist um, in Philadelphia. And that's me. And I'm Jamie. I'm co hosting uh, this webinar series with Amy. I'm a family therapist in Philadelphia, and I am also a part of the Sentio team. So, Jane, tell us what skill we're going to focus on today. We are focusing on empathic understanding today, um, which is, in my opinion, awesome skill. I've really leaned into it plenty of times in session and found myself getting a lot of use out of this one. Mm -hmm. Me too. It's funny, like in session, I'll find myself using it because we've done this practice of this skill before. And I'll be like, oh, here, I'm doing empathic understanding. So it's really cool to practice and then kind of notice when it, when it comes up. Um, yeah, I really like the skill actually. Um, and so the skill criteria for this skill of empathic understanding, there's four of them. Um, first is convey an accurate sense of the client's main concern. Number two, stay present in the moment. Three, avoid asking questions, making suggestions, or interpreting the client's experience. And then four is make sure to match the tone to the client's expressed emotions. Great. Thanks, Amy. So now we'll transition. I'm going to give a client statement and Amy is going to do her best to provide me a response as the therapist while meeting each four of the skill criteria that we just looked at before. And then afterwards, will you give me some feedback on how I did? Absolutely. Gentle, gentle. Voice. supportive nurturing feedback empathic yep. <clears throat> yes empathically attuned feedback mm -hmm. okay so starting at the beginner level client statements i will start whenever you are ready i'm ready i'm feeling really down today i just can't stop thinking about my mother who died last year Mm. Yeah, I, I really feel your grief as you're sharing about your mother's passing. Great. So now let's take Amy's response and let's look at the skill criteria and see if that awesome sounding response also meets the skill criteria that we're looking at. So convey an accurate sense of the client's main emotion. Um, yeah, she, she used the word grief and that really felt like it was uh, an underlying feeling that I was having. Um, I felt as though she was very present in the moment with me. Uh, that's criteria two. Criteria three, avoid asking questions, making suggestions or interpreting the client's experience. Absolutely felt as though she met that criteria um, and using a tone that matches my expressed emotion. So like sadness, grief, I really felt as though Amy's tone was matching my tone um, and matching my emotions in that way. Amy, how did that feel for you? Good, I think I like worry that naming like I feel that maybe kind of centered me, you know, instead of focusing on you. So I think I wanna try it again just you know, a little bit different. Great. <clears throat> I'm feeling really down today. I just can't stop thinking about my mother who died last year. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I wonder if I'm hearing some grief around the passing of your mother. Awesome. Thanks, Amy. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just pulling up the criteria again. Um, criteria one, um, again, convey an accurate sense of the client's main concern, really felt that grief. 
um, in, in what she was reflecting back to me or in, in what she was saying back to me. Um, two, very much felt as though she was present with me. Three, avoided asking questions, making suggestions or interpreting my experience. Four, definitely used a tone, um, a tone of voice that expressed the clients, that expressed my emotion, that really met me in the feelings that I was having. How is that one for you, Amy? Good. I felt, I felt better about that one than the first one. <clears throat> awesome. Feel good enough to move on to the next one, or would you like to give that one another try? I think I'm ready for the next one. Okay. I'd really like to feel better about myself. And I think I'm finally ready to work on some important issues here in therapy. Ooh, yeah, I, I hear some positivity and... <laughs> oh, yeah. There's that bounce. <laughs> Just Sorry. Totally. <laughs> you were so criteria four on that one. Like so criteria four. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh, I'm feeling criteria four are here yes I did well I just, I just finished <laughs> that was my fault I totally distracted you with my like head nodding with your like we were positive really rhythm good. the positive cadence that you had there <laughs> totally my fault um you want me to read that one again and try to like not break character <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, I'd really like to feel better about myself. And I think I'm finally ready to work on some important issues here in therapy. Hmm. Yeah. I, I really hear some optimism and, and maybe motivation for change today. Awesome. <clears throat> so great response. Now let's check if it fits the criteria um, convey an accurate sense of client's concern or what the client, um, is expressing. Definitely. I was feeling really optimistic and motivated and, and Amy articulated that I felt she was present with me, um, avoid asking questions, making suggestions or interpreting the client's experience. Um, I think that one also met that one. How did that one feel for you? Good. And, you know, it's sometimes hard to kind of get the underlying feeling, but it's fun when you get it, right? Like instead of saying, oh, you're ready for change, just kind of reflecting back, I'm thinking, okay, I hear optimism, I hear motivate. So it's cool to kind of name those underlying emotions and it feel, it seems like they landed with you. <clears throat> yes, they absolutely landed with me um hmm. and made me feel oh yeah yeah patch yourself um they made me feel very understood in that moment one more <clears throat> i guess a big part of me died when my mother died and I still need to find the space to deal with this. Yeah. Sounds like that was a huge loss for you. And you're still processing that. Awesome. Great. Thanks, Amy. Now let's jump to the criteria. Um, and even like before going into the criteria that felt, that felt nice. Now let's see if it, you know, checks out with the criteria. Criteria one, um, convey an accurate sense of what I was feeling. I really felt as though you were meeting me in the feelings that I was experiencing in that. Um, and that you were conveying those feelings to me. Um, felt very much like you were present with me and very engaged in your response. Definitely felt like you avoided asking questions or making suggestions or interpreting my experience in any way. So I'm at criteria three as well. And criteria four, matching um, my tone, like the tone in my expressed emotion, really felt like you were matching that tone in a way that even um, 
like kind of enabled me to like deepen that feeling within myself. Like if that therapeutic interaction was going to continue like more back and forth, I imagine we would have gotten to a really meaningful and, and, and powerful place for me as the client. Mm. Um, and I, I could really feel how you meeting all four of those criteria would have just really set us up for a nice, um, like a nice session, a nice therapeutic exchange. Um, so that was really, really great to feel as the client. Cool. Thanks for that feedback. And something I love that you just said was you felt like I really met you in your feelings, which I feel like is the core of this skill, right? Like I'm really feeling what you're feeling and offering that back to you. So I just liked that, that language. Good. I'm glad that that, that landed with you, right? Cause especially the skill, like it's not about you trying to like change my experience in any kind of way. It's about you being present and in it with me and um yeah just empathically understanding whatever it is that I'm expressing with you so really felt like you did an awesome job of demonstrating the skill criteria on all of those responses but I so appreciate the practice because the first time I responded I was kind of like oh did I get that right I'm not quite sure and then as I continued the practice, I kind of got into the flow of it, right? Like really meeting your tone, really getting that emotion. So I just appreciate kind of going through it a couple of times. Um, it seems like it gets easier with practice. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a lot of what our experience has been with practicing these is definitely, I mean, even not, with the practice we've done, it still feels potentially awkward and um, un, like not authentic and fluid the first time you give it a go. Um, but then it starts to just feel a little bit more, um, a little more authentic and starts to come a little bit more naturally and start to find yourself using it in session. Um, so the practice is definitely helpful for myself. It sounds like it's been helpful for you too, Amy. For sure. Awesome. Thanks for practicing with me. Thank you for being such an awesome therapist. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and thank everyone for checking out Deliberate Practice with Jamie and Amy, mm -hmm. focusing on empathic understanding.